I'd like to call on Alexandra Lynch and Shannon Philibrown to sing the national anthems of the United States and Canada. The lyrics are in the back of your program. May I ask you to please remain standing for both. Our Director of Residential Life, Javier Gonzalez, will sign the anthems for us. You may now be seated. I declare the 137th commencement of the University of Maine at Fort Kent to be convened. It is with great pleasure that I welcome the graduating class of 2019, as well as parents, families, friends, and dignitaries. Before we proceed, I'd like to take a moment to introduce the platform party. May I ask that as, they, that I call, as I call their name, they stand and that they remain standing. I ask that the audience please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Susan M. DeVoe, UMFK Alumni Associate, Association President, Class of 1993 and BOV member. Steph Guyon, UMFK Foundation President. Douglas Sear, UMFK Board of Visitors President. Dr. Jenny Radzma, Faculty Marshal. George Safinoff, Senior Class Speaker. 
Dr. Joseph E. Becker, faculty chair and professor of English. Dr. Aaron C. Susi, dean of undergraduate nursing, assistant professor of nursing, class of 1995. Dr. Stephen E. Hansen, chair, natural and behavioral sciences division, associate professor of biological sciences and environmental studies. Matthew Morin, dean of students. Pamela Ashby, Chief Business Officer. Trustee Kelly A. Martin, University of Maine System Board of Trustees. Trustee James Irwin, President of the Board, University of Maine Board of Trustees and Chair. The Honorable Governor Paul R. LePage, past Governor of the State of Maine and Honorary Degree Recipient. Dr. James Page, University of Maine System Chancellor. Dr. Tex Boggs, Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Ms. Carrie hessler Radelet, our commencement speaker. State House Representative John L. Martin, Assistant Professor of Environmental Law, State and Local Government. Mr. Melford Pelletier, one of our Distinguished Service Award recipients, Class of 1967. Mr. Randall Raymond, one of our Distinguished Service Award recipients and the class of 1971. Dr. Terry Murphy, not on the podium, she is our Mace Barrier Bearer Professor of Education. Would we please have a round of applause from the platform party? Thank you, you may now be seated. May I ask the faculty and staff of the University of Maine at Fort Kent to please stand. We are a teaching institution, and the people who work here are people who care deeply about education. They put students first. They care about their disciplines and professions. Our faculty are teacher scholars who have worked extraordinarily hard to make your time at UMFK one filled with deep learning and transformational experiences. The faculty and staff of UMFK have worked long and hard and with joy and dedication to prepare you for your future. Please join me in a round of applause for our faculty and staff. I would now like to welcome dignitaries to the podium to bring greetings to the class of 2019. Thank you to the platform guests and to all of you here today. Welcome. It is my pleasure to bring to you greetings on behalf of the state legislature in the state of Maine. We know that the education you received here at the University of Maine at Fort Kent has given you an introduction to, for continued world experience and to continue learning. Your future success will be based on, obviously, continued learning as I just indicated. You've been prepared to enter the next step of your education. In the years you've attended here, you've had, and the events around you have changed a great deal in Maine and around the world. And so we know that the involvement that you, your parents, friends, and the university has helped to prepare you for the future. With the help of the state of Maine, obviously with a little money from the legislature and the governor and the, to the University of Maine system. My final words to you are that few today, but I want you to remember as you leave UMFK. You need to participate in the world around you, to become participants in it and players in the events of the day, being employees, employers, political activists, and constantly be active in your communities. Become vocal for causes that you believe in to help and change the world. Do not forget that those of us at the University of Maine Fort Kent will be here. If you need consultation or suggestions, we'll be happy to give them to you. Best wishes and good luck to all of you, especially to the graduates. President Short, Chancellor Page, Governor LePage, Distinguished guests, parents, family members, faculty, staff, friends, and of course, students. It's a privilege and an honor to be with you today as we celebrate one of this 
most important, this, which is one of life's most important milestones. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the University of Maine system and the Maine citizens that we serve, I congratulate today's graduates on your achievements. We're proud of your scholarship, your research, your individual accomplishments, and service to the university community and to the state of Maine. And we are excited for all the potential before you as you transition to life after college. Uh, my personal congratulations to Governor, former Governor Paul LePage for the honor that you are receiving today, Governor. Um, on behalf of the board, uh, our students, and the people of Maine, I want to thank you for your support of public higher education and the university system during your eight years in office. You recognize the critical importance of the education as the means by which all people from all backgrounds get the opportunity to become employable, support, to support themselves and their families, and to responsibly exercise their rights and duties as citizens. Your support has been critical to us as we grapple with Maine's significant demographic and economic challenges. I also want to thank all of you who have supported our graduates. They've reached this point from many different places by many different paths. They have many destinations before them. And we must acknowledge that they would not have reached this point, nor would they reach those destinations without the love and support they have received from family, friends, teachers, coaches, community leaders, clergy, and others who have cared enough to impact their lives. We all owe our thanks to the people of Maine for their continued support of our university system, our public university system. We all know that the cost of higher education has been growing too fast for decades. We make a significant public investment in higher education so that the benefits of a post-secondary education, increasingly essential to a secure economic future, are available as broadly as possible. Maine is not a wealthy state and it has many challenges, and yet Maine people, through their elected representatives, to continue to make that investment. They should know that we are grateful and that we understand that we need to continue to show that we are worthy of these precious resources. This is a time of transitions, and I want to speak very briefly about some of them. There is the transition that brings us here today, of course, the transit across the stage, the turning of the tassel, the turning of the page from student to adult, but there are other important transitions to note as well. The transition of your president, John Short, to retirement. I want to congratulate John Short and thank him for all that he has done for this university and for the university system and for the people of Maine and wish him and Karen the best in the next phase of their lives. The transition of the chancellor also to retirement. It's been my pleasure and honor to work with Jim Page for the last seven years, and I want to thank him for guiding the university system towards his vision of one university in service to all of the people of Maine. We know we have much more to do to realize that vision, but our pathway is unmistakable, and we have achieved many key milestones thanks to his leadership. And then there was one other transition I would like to note, um, going on right here and at other campuses across the state. It's the transition of Maine's population and economy, and with it, the transition of Maine's universities. I know I speak for the entire Board of Trustees when I say that we are committed to seeing this campus and our other small campuses through these challenging times of declining enrollment and stretched resources. We can't say things won't change because they will. We know that the day and the time of seven autonomous and independent universities is drawing to a close. We have no crystal ball to show us how the University of Maine at Fort Kent of five years from now will differ from the University of Maine at Fort Kent of today. One thing we can say, however, is that the Board of Trustees is committed to a strong and sustained presence of our rural campuses in the communities that count on them. But for now, let's return to the excitement and promise of today. Thank you, students. Thank you, graduates, for making us all proud. And best, wish, best wishes to you all. Governor, Chancellor, President Short, Vice President Boggs, fellow faculty, staff, distinguished guests, 
and soon to be graduates of the University of Maine at Fort Kent. I bring greetings and congratulations from the faculty of UMFK to the class of 2019. You've worked long and hard to get to here today. You've attended classes, labs, and lectures, and you've successfully completed plenty of exams, clinicals, and internships. You might even had a few hours sleep somewhere. You'll leave here today with a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment as you head out into the wider world. You'll take with you tools that can help you keep growing as an individual and to help you make this world a better place as well. Here are a couple of things I can suggest. First, to help yourself grow as an individual, if you have not already done so, develop a love for reading good books. Along with reading material in your field, read the vast creative literature available that can help you cultivate a deeper understanding of the human condition. Books can connect you with other people's places and time periods. As the late astronomer Carl Sagan noted, what an astonishing thing is a book. One glance at it and you're inside the mind of another person, maybe somebody dead for thousands of years. Across the millennia, an author is clearly speaking, uh, speaking clearly and silently inside your head directly to you. Writing is perhaps the greatest of human inventions, binding people together who, have never, who never knew each other, citizens of distant epochs. Books break the shackles of time. A book is proof that humans are capable of working magic. Reading can help you as an individual by improving memory and empathy and research has shown that it makes us feel better and more positive too. Science shows that reading has some undeniable health benefits including helping with depression, cutting stress and reducing the chances of developing Alzheimer's and other cognitive diseases. Clearly, you can build on what you have learned at UMFK to be a smarter, healthier person by reading some good books. One of the ways in which you can help you can make the world a better place is considering using your education skills to change the current socio-political dynamics. In recent years, individuals and groups have worked very hard to divide us socially and politically. Demagogues and various other bullies have derided members of the press, disparaged immigrants, people of color, the LGBTQ community, and those with differing beliefs and religions. They have sometimes emboldened the worst elements in our society, which has in turn encouraged some extremists to attack our schools, houses of worship, and other gathering places. Graduates, help change the dialogue. Graduates, you can help across the nation where social safety nets have been weakened by curtailed or restricted nutrition assistance programs for the poor and unemployed, where drug treatments are needed to save the lives of many individuals caught in the grip of horrible opioid addictions and where the ranks of public health care workers who help protect us from disease outbreaks and who provide much needed medical services for our poorest citizens have been reduced. Needless to say, as is often the case, the 15 million children across the country from low-income households who bear the brunt of these decisions leave many of them consigned to suffer the ravages of poverty unchecked. This is an unfortunate regression of the American dream. Indeed, Franklin Delano Roosevelt stated it well some 80 years ago. The test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much, it is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. I encourage the class of 2019 to walk across this stage and go out and advocate for a world where individuals have wider access to basic medical care, adequate nutrition, low-cost education, unemployment assistance, and other forms of help when they need it without being shamed. You can stand up for the weakest and most vulnerable among us and be a defender, unafraid of speaking truth to power. As the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stated, an individual has not started living fully until they can rise above the narrow confines of individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of humanity. Every person must decide at some point whether they will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. This is the judgment. Life's persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Class of 2019, this is the beginning, not the end. That's why the ceremony is called commencement. You're setting forth on a new journey that will take you places you may have never imagined. In many ways, your education will never stop and you possess the tools of a baccalaureate education to put your experiences in perspective and enable you to assimilate them into your lives in deep and meaningful ways. The diploma you'll receive today demonstrates to the world you have a liberal education, one that has given you deep study in a particular field, forestry, nursing, 
criminal justice, business, environmental studies, behavioral science, and others, as well as analytical and critical thinking skills that prepare you to deal with a complex, diverse, and ever-changing world. Albert Einstein put it concisely, the value of an education in a liberal arts college is not the learning of many facts, but the training of the mind to think something that cannot be learned from textbooks. While we live in times that seem rather pessimistic as we face social rancor, climate change, anti-scientific thinking, and a host of other problems, I am optimistic that the graduates of UMFK's class of 2019 will help rectify some of these challenges our world faces. Why? Well, Confucius said it succinctly back in 500 BCE. Education breeds confidence. Confidence breeds hope. Hope breeds peace. I think a more educated, confident, hopeful, peaceful world is a pretty good goal, and I hope you will strive to reach it once you walk out these doors and head off down the first mile of the next stage of your lives. Congratulations. I wish you peace, happiness, and good fortune. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2019. I've enjoyed my time as alumni president. It has allowed me to reconnect back to the university um, I graduated from in 1993 as a nursing student. When I come to commencement, it really brings me back to the day that I graduated and the, I recall the feelings that I had um, on that day. Home is where the heart is. Cliche, right? But truth. UMFK has been your home for the last few years. You've been part of the UMFK community, part of the community of the St. John Valley. A little piece of your heart will be left here at UMFK. Perhaps for a few of you, you feel as though you will also be leaving behind a little blood, sweat, and tears. As you move forward, remember you can always come home. Stay connected to UMFK and keep us posted on your progress throughout your career. Graduates of UMFK have gone on to do some truly outstanding things, and I am certain that the class of 2019 will be no different. Best wishes on behalf of the Alumni Association. Well, good afternoon. My name is Jim Page. I'm the Chancellor of the University of Maine System, or I, will, I am for another seven or eight weeks, six, eight weeks or so. It's a great pleasure to be here and to congratulate and honor the graduates today. 44 years ago this weekend, I was where you were as a graduate of this institution. So it's terrific to close that circle and be back with you. A University of Maine System honorary degree is awarded by the Board of Trustees on behalf of the entire system and is a significant honor rarely bestowed. We award that honor today because of our honorees' extraordinary commitment to our student, to students, to our institutions, and to the state. Governor LePage's biography is well known. He grew up in Lewiston the oldest son of 18 children, and left home at the age of 11 to escape domestic abuse. Finding families who mentored him, employment and education became his path to a better future. A graduate of Husson College with an MBA from the University of Maine, he enjoyed an extensive career in business management, heading his own consultancy firm, and in advising and leading businesses in several industries, including the forest products, retail, banking, and energy sectors. He served three terms as mayor of the city of Waterville. He took office as governor in 2011, won re-election in 2014, and the rest, as they say, is history. Let me tell you a little bit about why we're making this extraordinary award today, however. Governor LePage's guiding principle in all of his engagements with me and with the system has been students first. He may remember that the first complete sentence he told me when we first met, he said hello, but the first complete sentence was, what are you going to do about credit transfer? What are you going to do about making and, and, and allowing and enabling access 
for our students to share the best resources wherever they needed to be throughout the state. This was a problem that had dogged the system, that had dogged our institutions for more than 40 years. And very quickly, after talking with him, working with him together, and working with the board and with our institutions, we developed that credit transfer program, and it is now a centerpiece of how our students are able to access education throughout the state. That's just one of many examples I give, could give. A few others. He was an early champion when the Pleasant Street Academy here in Fort Kent first took roots. It was Governor LePage who saw the promise in that, who entertained staff and the president from here in Augusta to talk about how this could be expanded, how it could be developed. And in the years since we first had that briefing with him, that statewide program has expanded from 700 students roughly a year, high school students, juniors and seniors throughout the state, to now touching more than 3,700 students every year. And that is a number, last semester, we awarded 12,000 credits throughout the system to high school students. And that gives them an advantage and an advance on their education and on their, on their future, which is unparalleled. That, 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 that uh, 12,000 credit hours taken on an annual basis, and if they all transferred, would that they would, into one of our institutions, would be a savings to Maine families of over $5 million a year just on that. So not only did he give us the leadership and the impetus for that, but he also provided the funds that were enabled us to scale to that. We talked about for five years, we froze tuition. And when it was time to come to the sixth year, we went to the governor and said, we, we have to increase it some now. And he said, I'll get you the extra money if you'll keep another year of freezing tuition. We did that. And in fact, the graduating class was the benefit of that, and, and the juniors also, the benefit of that extra hold on to the tuition. In operations, the university system received its greatest increases in operational funds during the last three years of the LePage administration than we had received in the, last 50, the previous 15. His support of education, of students, of our institutions, and what that means to the state, again, unparalleled. And most recently, when it was time to go to the voters of the state to ask for taxpayer support to improve our facilities, to improve our classrooms, our laboratories, to put up some new structures, including one that will be coming here in, in Fort Kent about a year from now. It was the governor's support which made possible the maneuvers of that bond through the legislature to where it became available to the voters and his support that helped carry the day in winning the votes of the supporters of the state of Maine in this last November. Always students first. And something that's not as well known the expenditures in related areas in higher education in a, in a state which is struggling to find resources for everything often engenders a lot of competition for those resources and a lot of, shall we say, strong feelings about how those are expended. And I don't know how many times I'm aware of that the governor fought tooth and nail behind closed doors, uh, sometimes with otherwise political allies and others, to ensure that our students had the best resources and the best, uh, uh, what's the other word for resources? I'm blanking on that. Uh, the best resources, the best support that they could have in moving forward. So, so much of what you see in, in what our people are able to produce today for our students and for the state is the direct result of his leadership, his vision, and his commitment to students first. We could have made this award anywhere, but this is the right place. It's the center of innovation. Pleasant Street Academy, Rural U being a great example of that. It's the place of commitment to students. You've all lived that. And I will admit that the governor has a certain attachment to this region that I, he shares with me. Coming from. So on behalf of the University of Maine System Board of Trustees, I have to get my... If I could now call uh, Governor LePage and Jim Irwin to assist in the hooding, I will read the citation. The University made it Fort Kent. To all who see these presents, greetings. On recommendation of the President and the faculty of the University made it Fort Kent, the trustees of the University of Maine system have conferred upon 
Paul R. LePage, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa for honorable cause, never better said, with all the rights and honors thereunto pertaining, in testimony whereof this diploma is granted at Fort Kent on the 11th day of May in the year 2019. Please joining me in thanking Governor LePage. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, I'm deeply honored. Uh, now that I've left the governorship, I am uh, transitioning into retirement. And I will tell you, it's a very difficult transition. I get up in the morning. I have now stretched brushing my teeth for 10 minutes. And then I have 23 hours and 50 minutes of every day with nothing to do. But I'm honored to be in Arista County this weekend. This is God's country. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Governor LePage, and thank you so much for your support for public higher education, for UMFK, and for this region. All across the United States today, people are joyous attending uh, college graduations. College graduations are a milestone, along with birth, con births, confirmations, weddings, graduations uh, are so, so important to our lives. Now, yesterday at the nursing pinning ceremony, I welcomed everyone, including crying babies. And I'm sure those crying babies will be reminded, you were there for your mommy's pinning or your daddy's pinning or whoever it was. And they'll, uh, it will be so important to them to say they were participants. At UMFK, we have so many students who have families, who are married, who have families, who know how hard it was to get your education uh, to, to pursue, and they were so, uh, uh, are so thankful for that. Before I present the Distinguished Service Awards and our commencement speaker, I'd like to highlight the enormous diversity of our today's graduating class. For a tiny college in northern Maine, it's amazing the diversity that this campus has had. The 2019 undergraduate class consists of 223 graduates, 26 of whom are international students. I'm pleased that 110 of those graduates are able to be here with us today. We also have 35 nursing students graduating from our cohort at the University of Maine at Augusta. Our students come from 16 countries today, our graduates and diverse locations including the following countries, the United States of America, Cameroon, Canada, China, England, India, Indonesia, Jamaica, Kenya, Nigeria, the Republic of Moldova, the Russian Federation, Scotland, Trinidad Tobago, Ukraine, and Vietnam. Our graduating students include residents from 14 different states. California, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Indiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Hampshire, New York, Oregon, Texas, and Virginia. Our Canadian students come to us from three different provinces, Quebec, Nova Scotia, and Ontario. Today we have 210 candidates for bachelor's degrees and 13 candidates for associate's degrees. Finally, while all of the graduates deserve special recognition, uh, if you permit me, I'd like to specifically mention these three students. Tanya Baldwin, a University of Maine at Presque Isle graduating senior, is here marching and she'll receive her degree here today with her daughter, Jessica Donovan, who's graduating with her Bachelor of Science degree in nursing. It's always a joy to see a parent and a child graduate together. So Tanya and Jessica, if you could just stand. I remember once having both a parent and a son in a class. 
uh, which was really unfortunate for the son because the mother was always so much better prepared for, for class. Uh, so I hope your grade points are, are about the same. In addition, we're delighted that Cesar Carrizo, originally from Argentina, traveled from Mexico to be part of our commencement ceremony today. Cesar called the university and asked, I know I graduated in, in, in much earlier um, and in 2004 and I just want to be able to come back and I want to, to march in commencement. Would that be all right? I said we would be delighted. The other day he came into my office and told me about his life after leaving UMFK. He said he started in sales and then he went to marketing. He worked for an airline. From there, he, he did other kinds of things. He worked, he, he had a high position within the equivalent of the Fed uh, in Mexico and is now working for uh, Bank of Mexico. He said it was important to come back and show his family how transformational a small college can be. He was very thankful for his experiences that led him to the life that he has in banking, in business, in finance, as an entrepreneur. He told me about a program he's doing with micro-lending with college students working with a, a college professor, a professor at Stanford University that, that lends micro-loans to college students who have ideas how, how they can make their communities better. Cesar is certainly a role model and stands for what we believe in, that this small college in northern Maine can make such a difference in the lives of all of our students. So Cesar is here with his brother who will be uh, uh, carrying a surgeon, Anibal Carrizo, a surgeon who's going to be a flag bearer for the Argentinian flag, his wife, who is an industrial engineer, and two of his children, the oldest and the youngest. Cesar, would you stand, please? Thank you. The University of Maine at Fort Kent is pleased and proud to present each year an award for extraordinary service to the institution and to our community. This year, we're delighted to bestow this award on two individuals. When we looked at the nominees, we said we really have to have both uh, as, as uh, awardees. Our first recipient is Mr. Melford Pelletier. I will now ask Maine State Representative John Martin to come forward to read the legislative sentiment. Thank you, Mr. President. It reads as follows. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing Milford Pelletier of Wallagrass, who has received the Distinguished Service Award from the University of Maine at Fort Kent. We extend our congratulations and best wishes, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 129th Legislature and the people of the state of Maine. Signed by myself, Senator Troy Jackson, the Speaker of the House, and the Senate President. Melford, would you come forward, please? The University of Maine at Fort Kent proudly presents the Distinguished Service Award to Melford Pelletier at the 137th Commencement Ceremony on May the 11th, 2019. This award is given to an individual who has gone above and beyond the service to the university to his community and to his state. We thank Melford for the enormous service that he's given to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. And thank you. Thank you, Paul. This year, we're pleased to present our second award to Reynold Raymond. State Representative John Martin will read the legislative sentiment and present it to Mr. Raymond. Thank you, Mr. President. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing Raynald Raymond of Eagle Lake, who is receiving today the Distinguished Service Award from the University of Maine at Fort Kent. We extend our congratulations and best wishes, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 129th Legislature and the people of the state of Maine, signed by myself and Senator Troy Jackson and the clerk and, the, and as well as the Senate President. Raynald, would you please come forward to receive your citation and the uh, Distinguished Service Award. The University of Maine at Fort Kent proudly presents the Distinguished Service Award to Raynald Raymond at the 137th Commencement Ceremony, May the 11th, 2019. 
This award is given to individuals who have gone above and beyond the service to the university and community. Reynold is retiring as CEO at Northern Maine General. He has been part of our, the UMFK Foundation. He has been a community leader and given service above and beyond the call of duty. Congratulations. I'll now ask our commencement speaker, Ms. Carolyn Carey Hessler Radelet, to join me at the podium. State Representative John Martin will read the legislative sentiment and present them to her. On behalf of the state of Maine and the Maine legislature, we, the members of the House and Senate, join in recognizing our distinguished speaker today from Washington, D.C., to be the keynote speaker at the University of Maine at Fort Kent's 137 commencement ceremony. She's the president and chief executive officer of Project Concern International and of global development organization working with families and communities to enhance health and hunger, end hunger, overcome hardship, and advance women and girls in 15 countries. She previously served as director of Peace Corps, America's iconic international volunteer service organization with programs in over 65 countries. She's a passionate leader in an effort to empower communities to discover their own sustainability, innovative solutions to poverty. We acknowledge her accomplishments and service and offer her our best wishes and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 29th legislature and the people of the state of Maine. Congratulations. We're delighted to have someone with such amazing accomplishments to speak to our graduates today. As you heard, Carrie hessler Radelet brings experiences as a teacher, mentor, international activist, change agent, manager of complex projects, Peace Corps volunteer, director of the Peace Corps, and head of a nonprofit. Her international work is truly amazing. She brings with us a perspective that I think will be very important to you, we welcome her, and please uh, help me in, uh, in thanking her for being here today. Hello, Bengals. <laughs> what a privilege it is to be here with you in the beautiful St. John's Valley to celebrate. What an amazing day it is. President Short, thank you for your generous introduction. Governor LePage, congratulations. Chancellor Page, welcome home. Uh, Vice President Boggs, thank you for your hospitality. Distinguished faculty and staff, parents, family members, friends, and most importantly, class of 2019. Congratulations, you made it, yeah. <laughs> Now, there may have been some challenges along the way. For all the nursing grads, I heard it was nursing 425. <laughs> or maybe it was the first time you drove to Fort Kent and asked yourself, where the heck is this place? And you were still an hour from here. Or maybe it was the time that you trekked through that blizzard to that all-important class that was going to define your future with only howling winds 20 plus inches of snow and zero visibility standing between you and the career of your dreams. Oh, wait a minute, that was just last week, right? <laughs> and then there are the stunning moment, moments that have defined your time at UMFK. Grabbing coffee or hanging out with your friends at the Bengals Lair. Cheering for your extraordinary women's basketball team in the 2019 USCAA National Championship. Relishing the one day it's warm enough to wear a t-shirt outside. <laughs> Coming together with the community to celebrate the, the Scarecrow Festival and homecoming. For some of you international students, maybe it was the first time you saw a moose. How about that? Or catching frostbite when you were watching the Can-Am sled dog race. Or maybe it was a study breakfast. Or maybe it was this morning when you woke up on a day that you thought at times would never come. You put on your cap and gown, lined up out there with your classmates, and marched together one last time as UMFK students to the sports center. 
and here you are and you're graduating. Families, you can finally breathe a sigh of relief. And I'm so honored, really honored, to be here on this special day. This is an extraordinary university that truly does put students at the center. Now, what I'd like to talk to you about today, graduates, is that neb nebulous, unpredictable, terrifying, and thrilling place we call the future. Now, as the saying goes, today is the first day of the rest of your life. No pressure there. Today, you get to cast aside all of the boxes you had to check off to get here the tests, the prerequisites, the degree requirements. Today you get to dispense with the old, old roadsides to success if you've known them up till now and go off the map entirely towards any direction you choose, along any route you'd like, in any direction your passion pulls you. It's a prospect that is both exciting and overwhelming, I know. So what I'd like to offer today are just a few coordinates for you to consider as you plot your journey into the future. These are thoughts that I would have liked when I was graduating, just like you, closing out one incredible cha chapter and looking forward to all the possibilities that lie ahead. Coordinate number one, make, response, make relationships your priority. Whether we're talking about family or school or business, the most important moments in life are defined by relationships. A wise woman once told me, if you're in an argument with someone, walk a mile in their shoes. If you still can't agree, you'll be a mile away and you've got their shoes. <laughs> the truth is, being able to walk in someone else's shoes, to see the world through their eyes, and to empathize with their hopes and their fears, these are indispensable skills for shaping progress in today's complex, interconnected world. Let me tell you a story that I heard about three years ago from three-star Army General Carl Eikenberry, who served as the US ambassador to Afghanistan. He told me of a terrible battle in Helmand province that had cost the lives of 15 Marines. But in the end, the U.S. Afghani troops were victorious, and they were able to reclaim a key territory from the Taliban. A few days later, General Eikenberry decided that he wanted to visit that area to establish relationships with the local chiefs. So he flew down to Helmand province and drove out to the district that had seen the most intensive fighting. He led a huge convoy in his bulletproof vehicle and was surrounded by dozens of armed soldiers. When he arrived at the destination, he was greeted joyously by the headman of the village who ran out from his small hut as he saw the convoy approaching. He was shouting loudly in Pashtu language, greeting the convoy with incredible enthusiasm. General Eikenberry was really surprised. What was this man who was so very excited to see him saying? He couldn't understand a word. The translator told the general, that the headman was looking for a man named Rick. General Eikenberry looked around confused. Is there someone here named Rick? There's nobody named Rick in the convoy. The translator asked the headman for whom he was seeking. Rick, Rick, Peace Corps, Peace Corps. He lived here 25 years ago. He built that irrigation system out back, but he lived with my family and he was like a brother to me. When I heard the Americans were coming, I hoped it would be Rick. General Eikenberry told me that he couldn't sleep that night thinking about what he had witnessed. What really bothered him was that the names of those 15 Marines, those incredibly brave Marines who gave their life for that village and for that headman, their names would never be known to him or his village. But that one Peace Corps volunteer who lived there 25 years earlier was beloved in a way that he had never witnessed before. It was then he told me that I began to understand the transformational power of human relationship built through service and time and shared labor. This Rick, he said, lived like a brother to that headman and through the love and trust they developed through two years of service, was more powerful than any army Afghanistan has ever witnessed. Relationships matter. 
We won't be able to create a world or even a country at peace unless we can find a way to connect with one another, to we reach across boundaries of all kinds, to find compromise and cultivate common ground. Make relationships your priority. The next co coordinate I would plot for you has to do with finding your North Star. In the early 1960s, President John F. Kennedy paid a visit to the newly created NASA. At one point during his tour of the space facility, President Kennedy noticed a janitor busily cleaning up one part of the command center. So the president stepped away from the tour, went over to the man, stuck out, stuck out his hand, said, hi, I'm Jack Kennedy. Tell me about what you do. Well, Mr. President, the janitor replied, my name is Frank and I'm doing my part to put a man on the moon. No matter where you go from here, whether you start at the bottom or you dive in at the top, I hope you'll find a way to pursue your passion. Life is so much richer when you have a mission that inspires you, a purpose that speaks to you, a calling that drives you, especially on those days when work seems endless and the end is far from sight. An income, health insurance, a roof over your head, all these things matter, right? Right, parents? Yes, they matter. But as you enter the working world, if all you consider is what brings you wealth or status or comfort, there will come a time when you realize that something is missing between the hours that you clock in and clock out. So if you can possibly swing it, at least part of your time doing something that, does, that brings you joy, do that. Find something that you can believe in. Ask yourself, what inspires you? What excites you? What fuels your curiosity, your, creati your creativity, your passion? What do you love? And then focus on the role you play, no matter how small, in achieving your passionate dream. Remember, a janitor was helping to put a man on the moon. For you, maybe it's curing cancer. Maybe it's combating climate change or conserving the ecosystem here in beautiful northern Maine. Maybe it's taking care of people who are sick or reaching out to those who are fearful or alone. Maybe it's earning wealth and then using that wealth to help others. Maybe it's your faith. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's teaching sports and leadership skills to vulnerable youth. Heck, maybe it's hats. But whatever it is, let that be your compass north. Name your passion and then pursue it with vigor. The third coordinate I would plot for you has to do with the gifts you've been given and the capabilities you've developed here at UMFK. And that is do well by doing good. Now I grew up in a small town about 1,200 people in northern Michigan. It's, it's way up north, very close to Canada, just like this. It's a part of the state where winter is always coming, I guarantee you. We still have snow on the ground, more snow than you have here. It reminds me actually a lot of Fort Kent, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Most of my high school friends there didn't have the opportunity to attend college. And in my small town, there were very few opportunities for employment apart from seasonal labor. When I graduated, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I remember going to see my grandmother, who was a very wise woman, just after I graduated. She said something I will never forget. She said, you have only one shot at life. What are you going to do with your one life? That question, it struck me to the core. I was raised in a family that valued service to others, but I also knew that I wanted to see the world. I wanted to break out of my shell. I wanted to get a little uncomfortable by doing something different. And as I thought about competing in the workplace, I wondered what I was gonna to do to distinguish myself from the rest of the pack. I knew it was gonna be hard to compete against those who came from privilege, those who had gone to prep school and that had had fancy internships. I knew a lot of people who had summer work on Wall Street. I worked for five, five years supporting myself as a waitress so I could go to college. In order to shine, I was gonna to have to do something different. I'd also gotten married right out of college and my husband Steve was open to doing something wild and crazy, so we joined the Peace Corps. In my small town, that was definitely unconventional, but it was the best decision I ever made. It literally opened up the world to me and set me on the career path that brought me to Fort Kent today. 
My husband Steve and I were assigned to secondary school teachers at an all-girls Catholic school in Western Samoa, tiny island in the South Pacific. Steve taught math and I taught English. The, the students we taught were very motivated, but in the small Samoan village where we taught, the odds were absolutely stacked against them. Of the 300 girls in our class, only five of them would pass the graduation exam. And of those five, only one would go to university. We despaired, we truly despaired, that so few of our students were able to continue their education. And we honestly wondered if we had done anything to make a difference in their lives. But about a year after we left Samoa, Steve and I received a letter from Palapa, one of our students. She wrote to tell us about how our English and math classes had helped her to get a job at the bank and how her salary was helping to pay her two younger sisters' school fees. But more importantly, she said to me, you help me see that we girls can have a future of our own, that we have the right to choose the person we want to marry, the number of children we want to have, the kind of career we want to pursue. You help me believe that I could start a business if I wanted to, or even seek a leadership position in my village. Maybe even one day I'll be a Matai, which is a village chief. I, I really wept when I read that letter. I don't know if Palapa ever started that business or became a Matai, but what I know is how much I learned from Palapa and her fellow students, and especially the joy that I felt from serving others. Many Peace Corps volunteers feel that they got much more of our, out of our experience than we actually gave. I know that my husband and I certainly did. Our Peace Corps service got us into some of our nation's top graduate schools, and in our job interviews since that time, People invariably mention Peace Corps as the reason they took a second look at us. Now, I want to be clear. You do not have to join the Peace Corps to find meaning or create a standout resume. But I do urge you to find something that both builds your skills and serves others. It will bring you great joy. I am here to tell you that the best way to do well is by devoting at least part of your career to doing good. Peace Corps set me on my path, my public health career, my leadership of, of a federal agency, and now as CEO of an international nonprofit, Project Concern International. My life has been rich and full because I have had the opportunity to serve. I have done well because I have tried in every position I've held to do good. So my final coordinate to you is this. With all the doors that are open to you, with all the choices that lie ahead, Will you consider using your talents to serve others? Maybe it means devoting yourself to your community right here in Fort Kent, beautiful Fort Kent. Maybe it means taking time outside of work to mentor others and share your passion for science and technology, as so many of you already do. I'm really impressed by the amount of volunteer service that happens right here among you students. Maybe it means wearing our nation's uniform and bringing your technical know-how to serve our country. Maybe it means serving your community or your country in the Peace Corps AmeriCorps. You don't have to go halfway around the world to make a difference in someone's life any more than you have to be standing right here to feel a bond with UMFK. But if you let the call to do well by doing good and habit your imagination, it will guide you for the rest of your lives and you and the world will be better off because you made that choice. No matter what kind of work you pursue, no matter what path you follow, no matter who you are, you have a role in creating a more peaceful, happy, and hopeful world. So I leave you with these three coordinates as you plot your future. Number one, make relationships your priority. Number two, pursue your passion. Number three, do well by doing good. And if you do that, I have absolutely no doubt that you will go on to create an incredible future, not only for yourself and your family, but for our world. Now, one final word for your graduates, and this has to do with your families or the significant others who have brought you to this point. Take a moment today to recognize them for all they have done to help you on your UMFK journey. Tell them you recognize the sacrifices they made to bring you to today. Tell them you remember more than they realize. Tell them that you love them more than they know. Thank them for all their support, because your victory is in part theirs.
You have everything you need, everything you need to imagine a better future right here inside of each and every one of you. Congratulations, class of 2019. I cannot wait to see what you do with your crazy smiles. Thank you, Carrie, for that very inspirational message and the recommendations you've given to our graduates. I now invite George Safanoff to address the graduating class. Hello, everyone. It's a great honor to be here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what pushed me to become a UMFK student, but it didn't take me long to realize how glad I am that I did. Having such a diverse and united campus has played a huge role in me becoming who I am today. I was fortunate enough to get to know some of my professors like I never would in any other school because of the atmosphere we had in our classes. And thanks to that, I got the right mentorship and the right guidance for me to feel confident in my next steps as I'm about to graduate. <laughs> this is very exciting. <laughs> Almost too exciting, but as a foreign student, I was welcomed by this community of international students from all over the world. And that alone is something special that this campus has. As a foreign student, you have to face a lot of challenges when coming to North America to pursue your studies, like differences in mentality, culture, you know, certain things you're not supposed to say. There was a lot of confusion at first, but UMFK alleviates parts of these difficulties. As there are dozens of students going through the same exact thing. And it brings us together, or at least that's how I feel about it. And for that, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for that unconditional and perhaps even unintentional support that you gave me. I was fortunate enough to make lifelong friends. Some of them are students and some are faculty. And thanks to their influence, I'm feeling more than confident in what's ahead which is not something I could say when I was 17 when I came here for the first time. A 17-year-old me was like, Maine, that's, that's by the ocean, right? Yeah, yeah, all right, let's go. <laughs> it didn't take me long to realize that the ocean is pretty far from here. <laughs> but on a more serious note, I want to congratulate all of the graduates with this big step you're taking forward. And UMFK being a smaller school, I got to know most of you. And I can say with confidence that I'm proud to have such an amazing class graduating along with me. Thank you. In closing, the graduating class would like to recognize one faculty and one staff member whom we feel have consistently demonstrated enthusiasm, concern, and understanding for both UMFK students and campus as a whole. When I call your name, please stand to be recognized. The Senior Class Award for Outstanding Faculty Member goes to Tanya Sleeper. The Senior Class Award for Staff Member goes to Denise Potwin. I'm really glad that I chose to pursue my business studies at this campus. Thank you. Will the candidates for degrees please rise? The candidates for degrees please rise. Mr. President, these candidates have successfully fulfilled all of the requirements prescribed by the faculty and the board of trustees for their respective degrees. Therefore, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to recommend these candidates for graduation and I respectfully request that you confer upon them 
the degrees they have earned. Will the graduates please come forward to receive your diplomas. For those of you who are receiving rewards, Dr. Susie will be presenting them to you before you return to your seat. Bachelor of Arts and Sciences, Rodney Mark Witter. Bachelor of Science in Behavioral Science, Brandon Bouchard. Cody James Chapa, magna cum laude, Student Senate Outstanding Senior Award. Trio Student of the Year, Student Senate. Dara Lee Dion. Sky K. Parker. Bailey Nicole Robichaud, Magna Cum Laude, Behavioral Science Award. Bachelor of Science in Biology, Samuel C. Sear. Yana Gail Keaton Daniels, magna cum laude. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth DeFrancia, cum laude. Shannon Diana Phillibrown. Matthew Charles Forshe, cum laude. Valentina Sarah Green. Seth Ryan Hannigan, magna cum laude. Sana Hrnyuk, Magna Cum Laude, Biology Award. Dakota Ray Martin, P.I.R. Romario Raul Romain, Magna Cum Laude. Alexandria in Sanchez Moral, cum laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Business, Kavon Daniel Blake, magna cum laude. Stephanie Lynn Caron, summa cum laude, valedictorian, presidential award for academic excellence. Cesar A. Carrizo, cum laude. Lee Proof 
Freeman, magna cum laude. Daniel Michael Joseph Giru Pare. Vanessa Marilyn Pelletier, summa cum laude, Business Management Award, Presidential Award for Academic Excellence. Grace Margaret Ritano. Georgie Safanov, Performing Arts Award. Mackenzie May Saucier, Magna Cum Laude. Amar Smith, Magna Cum Laude. Ashley Rache, Kimberly Williams. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Computer Applications, Max Philip Jandro, summa cum laude, Presidential Award for Academic Excellence. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Conservation Law Enforcement, Alyssa Ashley Lutz, summa cum laude, Conservation Law Enforcement Award. Tyler Albert Raymond, cum laude. Nicholas Michael Westfall. Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education. Tanya Rose Baldwin, magna cum laude, University of Presque Isle degree recipient. Courtney Ruth Miller, Student Senate. Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies, Megan Morgan Pelletier, cum laude, Environmental Science Award. Bachelor of Science in Rural Public Safety Administration, Sean Michael Merrill. Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Daniel Houston Agborki, cum laude. Constance Marie Anderson, cum laude. Manuela Jezubi Enyika, magna cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Dwayne Joseph Belanger, magna cum laude, Veteran Nursing Honor Society, Student Senate PIR. Sarah Elizabeth Bickford, magna cum laude. Alicia Michelle Bouchard, cum laude. Rebecca Lindsay Brown, cum laude. Jean M. Butler, summa cum laude, Nursing Honor Society.
Nicholas A. Clark, summa cum laude, Nursing Honor Society, Presidential Award for Academic Excellence. Kendra Marie Coffin, cum laude. Benjamin Raymond Costello, magna cum laude. Jessica Rose Donovan, cum laude, P-I-R. Cecilia Nequeta Efutlacha, summa cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Emily Francis Fitzpatrick, magna cum laude. Angela L. Frechette, magna cum laude. Jihan Jihad Garet, P.I.R. Sarah Jean Gilson, magna cum laude, Hensler Prize. Jody Dawn Goodwin, summa cum laude. Tiffany Lynn Goyette, cum laude. Charlotte Blanche Grass, summa cum laude, outstanding RN to BSN Student Award, Nursing Honor Society. Victoria Ray Hansen, magna cum laude. Danielle Ann Hitchcock, magna cum laude. Samantha Catherine Jackson, magna cum laude, Presidential Award for Academic Excellence, PIR, Nursing Honor Society. Crystal Robbie Kingsbury, summa cum laude, Salutatorian, Presidential Award for Academic Excellence, Nursing Honor Society. Vanessa Denise Lopez Garcia, cum laude. <laughs> Dang Lu, magna cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Alexandra D. Lynch, magna cum laude, veteran, Kappa Delta Phi sorority, Nursing Honor Society, President, Student Senate, PIR. <laughs> Milana Lynn Marquis, cum laude. Alyssa June Martin, summa cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Heather R. Matthews, magna cum laude. Jasmine Nicole McDonald, magna cum laude, Nursing Honor Society, Presidential Award for Academic Excellence. Grace Ann McKellar, magna cum laude.
Rebecca Michaud, cum laude, P.I.R. Shelley Marie Millard, summa cum laude. Leanne Joyce Norsworthy, cum laude, Associate of Arts and Sciences in Allied Health. Cassidy Lynn O'Leary. Victorine Ohms, magna cum laude. Nicole Elise Pinette, magna cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Anita Ann Plog, cum laude, Student Senate, Kappa Delta Phi, NAS. Jayla Ann Pontbrien, cum laude, Barbara Akran Kwarmin Summa Cum Laude, Nursing Honor Society. Brittany Yvonne Rice Cum Laude, PIR. Kamoya Samuels Cum Laude. Diana Sirwa, cum laude. Cameron Louise Smith, cum laude, Trio Support Award. Hannah Strines, summa cum laude, Outstanding Traditional Nursing Student Award, Nursing Honor Society. Danette Tecklenburg, summa cum laude. Caitlin Rebecca Voisin, magna cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Megan Teresa Wardwell, summa cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Mary Elizabeth Watson, magna cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Erica N. Wentworth, summa cum laude, Nursing Honor Society. Associate of Arts in Conservation Law Enforcement, Isaac Willie Bossy, magna cum laude. <laughs> Associate of Arts in Criminal Justice, Trevor Cody Bouchard, magna cum laude, Criminal Justice Award. Abigail Ashley Lavoie, Aspen Blake Tilly, Kappa Delta Phi Sorority. <laughs> Associate of Science in Applied Forestry Management, Zachary Edward Cox.
Alexander Gregory Gillis Magna Cum Laude Applied Forest Management Award, Associate of Science Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Jeffrey Allen Hill, Jr. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby admit you to the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Arts and Sciences, Associate of Science in Applied Forest Management, and Associate of Arts with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Signifying your possession of a university degree, you may now turn your tassel to the left. Congratulations, graduates, and may I ask the graduating class to please rise together one more time. Would you please turn and give a round of applause to your family and friends who have supported you along the journey here. Thank you. You may now be seated. I want to thank the UMFK Commencement Committee members for their planning of today's event, to everyone else who helped with our ceremony, including flag bearers, marshals, singers, uh, musicians and others who volunteered their time. I would also like to acknowledge J.D. Irving Limited for their donation of seedlings for today's graduates. As you leave, you will pr be presented with a seedling. In addition to planting these seedlings, they carry a hope that the graduate will plant ideas, relationships, and projects that will grow now and well into the future. Every day I interact with UMFK students, I feel better about the future of our communities and our country. Our students exemplify civility, resourcefulness, respect, and a joy for learning. They yearn for mentoring, guidance, and help in their academic, social, and personal development. They have embraced a holistic education, and they have sought out learning experiences through co- and extracurricular activities, lectures, plays, and other programming. They have learned from each other and they have developed rich relationships through mentors. They understand the importance of open minds and lifelong learning. I commend them and urge them to be role models for their communities. Again, graduates, congratulations on your successes and best wishes for your future. At this time, will Shannon Brown and Alexandra Lynch please lead us in the UMFK alma mater. The words are on the back cover of the program.
This concludes our commencement ceremonies this, today. We thank you for being with you. I hope you will join us at reception immediately following the ceremony under the tents in the parking area behind the St. David House and adjacent to the sports center complex. This area will be directly in front of you as you follow us out the door to greet your graduates. A note for our graduates, if you received an academic award today, please come back to the podium after the procession so that we can take a photo. Please wait for the platform party and graduates to march out in the recessional before leaving the sports center. Thank you.